Hey guys, welcome back to the little bit of the past. It's not that far. Like, I think this is probably going to go up, like, in August. Um, it's kind of crazy that you guys are actually watching the vlogs now. And thank you so much for your support and your comments. Totally could have used that during the process. Um, but yeah, so today is August 14th. And I am at a point of frustration that I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I asked... I asked my agency, like, am, am I getting travel dates soon? Because starting back to work, my admin has been asking, I need to know, like, am I going to get them soon? Because, like, we need some sort of plan in place. And they're like, um, yep, um, we hope to have them soon. We anticipate travel being the end of September, beginning of October. I was like, no, that makes zero sense to me. Everyone is traveling like so much sooner after court decree, which I got today. I got my court decree today, um, which is why I asked. Um, and so like, I'm like, no, that's stupid. It shouldn't take that long. So I'm hoping their dates are off, but I'm counting down six weeks, which will be, um, I think the 24th of September. I just was really hoping to not start back to work with students because for a few reasons. One, because I don't think it's fair to them to start with me, have all my routines, all my programming, all that, just to be start all over with another teacher. Two, I don't think it's fair to another teacher to not start the school year and then take over like a couple weeks into the school year. Three, I'm terrified of getting sick because if I get sick from these little buggers, which I always get sick from them, but so even if I get a stupid head cold from them, it can screw everything up. So anyway. I will be face mask, face shield, sanitizing everything. No one comes near me. No one touches me. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm frustrated by that. I hope I have dates soon, and I hope that they are closer mid-September than end of September. Um, but the thing that really was like, uh, what? Was they said it would be a three-week trip. Yeah. So originally it was going to be a three-week trip because two-week quarantine and then one week of like getting her, getting all the paperwork and stuff like that. Um... And so I was like, I emailed them back. I'm like, why is it three weeks? Because quarantine has been dropped for Canadians. So that would mean normal one week. And they're like, well, because of COVID, um, citizenship, you need to wait for citizenship, which is taking about um, two weeks. So I don't quite understand what's going on. I emailed them back like, please keep me in the loop. I need a step-by-step -step of what's happening. This in-the-dark stuff I can't handle. Especially what happened with my India agency, I need to know what's going on. I can't just be left in the dark and expected to roll with it. Um, and they often get mad at me because I will look up my own information and then I'm like, well, so-and-so said this or this is what I'm seeing. And they'll be like, well, don't do that. It's like, well, I wouldn't have to do that if you actually gave me information. And um, maybe if this was not seven years of being screwed over by people not telling me information, uh, hello, fertility clinic. <laughs> then maybe I would be in a better situation. Let's see. Um, fertility clinic with IVF, fertility clinic with embryo adoption, um, and India. So there's at least three situations where I paid a significant amount of money to then be screwed over by people not giving me information when they should have. So yeah, I'm a little hesitant and weary about actually being left in the dark and not knowing what's going on. So I emailed back just being, I, I was much nicer than that. I was just like, because of my previous experience, I cannot be left in the dark. Please, I don't care how long the process is actually going to take. Which I do, but I don't. Like, we'll get there. But I need to have a step-by-step -step breakdown of what to expect. Because this just kind of rolling with it is not working for me. And I'm like, I need to know, like, when am I getting custody of her in that three weeks? Because I can't, I have no income from the moment I travel until I have custody of her. And that's what really sucked with the quarantine because to be quarantined for two weeks meant zero income for two weeks. And I said, I need to know when I get custody of her during those, those three weeks because I need to plan accordingly when I have no income. Um, I'm ex I'll, I'll go into it in a second what I'm expecting. But, and I'm like, on top of that, I need time to, like, I have a dog. I got to figure out where she's going. Like, I, I, I can't just be like, oh, suddenly, oh, yeah, by the way, and your trip is three weeks. No, <laughs> that's not how life works. You can't suddenly be like, your week-long trip is now three weeks. <sighs> anyway, what I'm anticipating is what's going to happen. Taylor, I will get you food in a minute. Mommy's filming a video. Okay. 
I don't know if you guys can hear the digging of her digging at her dish. Um, Taylor, you ate last night less than 12 hours ago. You know, you're fine. Or maybe not 12 hours, but anyway. Um, so what I'm anticipating is, is that as soon as she has like her birth certificate, um, like normal, like normally how I would travel, then I would travel and go get her. And then we get her passport. And what normally would have happened was we would then get her travel authorization. And from my understanding, I can still get her a travel authorization. I just need her birth certificate to prove that she's my daughter and my passport to prove I'm a Canadian citizen. So I emailed them back saying that's what I was expecting. Um, but I don't know what with citizenship what the dealio with, with that is. Is it a Canadian government requirement that she has citizenship before she travels home? Is it a Bulga Bulgarian requirement that she has citizenship before she travels? Or is that an, an agency, like, we don't want kids traveling without citizenship because of the COVID situation? Because, um, yeah, like, I, I would like to know why, why that is a requirement. But my guess is I go, I travel, I pick her up, we have her passport, we apply for her, we wait for their citizenship to occur, and then we travel home. So I will have custody of her that whole time. So I have income the whole time. The only thing is that my poor dog is stuck in boarding that whole time. So I don't know. I'm. If it is the situation where I have custody of her, I am very, very tempted to um, travel to my parents' house, drop off the dog, and then... Um, then go to Bulgaria and then when we come back we stop at my parents house for like a week or two. Um, the reason I'm thinking that um, is my parents can watch the dog and if travel dates get longer like say I end up there an extra week um, so then I'm there a month. Taylor's not importing for a freaking month like that is so long for her like oh. Anyway my other thinking is if I have custody of her I have three weeks to bond with her which is known is not a lot um, but it is something. And then, so I'm flying with a child that I actually have known for three weeks. And then we travel to my parents' house. And yes, that's a transition for her. But then if we're there for, say, a week or two, um, then, then, I, then I have some help with her and Taylor kind of thing. And then we travel back to Alberta. Um, I'm not sure the financial cost of that, what the difference would be. Um, with stuff, um, but a lot of my layovers from the flights I've looked at, I would be laying over in Toronto anyway. So it could not, it could be like a thing where I'm not even, um, not even, um, what do I call it? How do I say it? Like I'm not even actually having a stopover. Like I'm, as I'm having my stopover, I go and give my parents the dog, depending on how long it is and because of security and stuff like that. Um, but like there was one that was a layover of like 19 hours. So, <laughs> so in that case, it's anyway, so I'm, I'm considering that, but the financial cost of doing that is kind of making me weary. Um, the fact that if Canada extends its quarantine, um, for international travelers returning, I would then be quarantined at my parents' house which is not an ideal situation because um, I, I need food, I need a bathroom. Like uh, when, you're, when you're in quarantine like that, you're not allowed to really have exposure to other people. Um, and then on top of that, it is extra change for Emirates. So instead of just being in the hotel for three weeks and then coming home, um, there's that extra kind of step involved. Um, but I would like my parents to meet her and it kind of sucks with everything happening that I don't know when they're going to meet her. So in that situation, it kind of feels like kind of nice for them to actually get to meet their granddaughter. So at this point, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I also like, I filmed the packing video. I edited the packing video. It is uploaded and scheduled. And now it's like, am I going to keep that? Because I really don't want to bring more stuff. I really don't want to check a luggage, check a luggage, check luggage or anything like that. Um, but three outfits for three weeks. Yeah, maybe. Um, I am slightly tempted to bring cloth diapers. A little tempted. Um, so I'm not buying diaper disposable diapers for three weeks. Um, but on the other hand, I kind of want her tested for parasites first. My food is ready, so I'm going to go now. But um, yeah, I don't know what's quite going on. I'm just so frustrated by the fact that everyone likes to keep me in the dark. Like, how hard is it to be like, Oh, current requirements are blah, blah, blah. They just emailed me saying they would get me in touch with families. 
um, once I had travel dates. How hard would it be to include in that email, this is the current process that's happening. Like, I understand fluid things are fluid and I need to be flexible. I'm okay with that. I don't like this, hey, we'll just not tell you anything. We aren't going to tell you anything until you have travel dates. Oh, but those travel dates, by the way, you're going to be gone for three weeks. Like, it's bullshit. I'm, t I'm so done with adoption stuff in general. Um, but, like, to just be like, oh, yeah, your one-week trip is actually three weeks, um, but not because you have to quarantine, but because of some immigration thing that may or may not be a government requirement. It might just be a them requirement. Um, so, yeah, and if it's a them requirement, I'm not quite sure what I'll do. If I will go against them and just take her and leave. Because if I can travel on travel authorization, why why would I spend an extra two weeks in country to get her citizenship? And what if her citizenship takes even longer than that? Like, what if things close down again? Like, it's just, I don't know. It's just one of those things where I'm so frustrated by the process and the fact that no one is actually giving me proper information. Like, even this. Oh, yeah, like, when I, when I, like I said, they said, oh, it's three weeks. I had to ask why it was three weeks. And even their answer, oh, because of COVID um, citizenship, it takes about two weeks, and then you can get her visa to travel. Uh, <laughs> okay, like, that's not my understanding of how, how things are working in terms of Canadian government, so. Anyway, that's my end of my rant. We are almost there. It's just, seriously, I'm just done. Why can't I have something just go easily? <sighs> so you guys are going to see this, I think, end of August, so, um... I may or may not have, I mean, that's in like two weeks. I may or may not have decided on what the hell I'm doing with Taylor for those times. Um, I hopefully have travel dates, which will hopefully be our next video. Um, she did say to give her a call next week. I said, okay, let me know when's okay to call because I need information. Um, guaranteed she's going to say, stop looking up stuff. I'll be like, no, tell me information. I won't have to. Anyway, um, yeah, so... Probably next video will be travel dates. Can't guarantee that it won't be me ranting. Um, but yeah, this is going to go at end of August. Um, don't forget to subscribe to A Few Extra Dragons because I have my travel vlogs going up on there right now. My plan was to um, film trip one or trip two and have us only be a week behind. But if we are traveling for three weeks, you're not going to get that for a while. <laughs> so we might be like a month behind. Or I might do catch up where I'm like uploading twice a day or something like that. We'll see. Um, but right now I'm working on videos so that way my main channel actually has content. Um, which now that I'm going to be traveling for three weeks, it's like... <sighs> anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys later. Bye guys.